Hey everyone, Dan with Mac Rumors, and last week we asked you, our Mac Rumors readers and viewers, what your favorite camera application is on iOS. And in this video, we compiled a list of some of the best and more popular options out there for you to help improve your photography game. Our first app on the list was one of the more popular recommended apps, and it's called Halide. Halide offers tons of robust features that every serious mobile photographer will need, like manual controls for shutter speed, ISO, white balance, etc. The UI is very clean and is one of the few apps out there that allows for an easy one-handed use with access to controls and features at the ready. A lot of the apps that we will feature today offer a pretty similar feature set, like histograms, level, and grids for great shot compositions, as well as the more common features like pro controls with exposure, manual focus, etc. Halide offers a plethora of options to help turn your iPhone into more of a DSLR-like camera. Halide saves photos in JPEG and in RAW, which gives users the ability to fine-tune nearly every aspect of their photos during the editing process. And if you take this one step further, Halide just updated its Smart Raw feature yesterday, which uses machine learning to optimize exposure in auto mode and will help improve dynamic range and reduce noise. One last cool feature with this app, like the stock application, it takes advantage of the iPhone's portrait mode and it offers its own depth feature, but for users who have an iPhone XR, you can use Halide and its portrait mode to take portraits of objects, pets, food, etc., which is something that Apple does not currently support in its stock camera app on the 10R. It only offers the ability to take portrait photos of people. Halide can be purchased on the App Store for $5.99, which if you're serious about mobile photography, Halide is a fantastic app to own. Also on the App Store and available for $5.99 is ProCam 6, which is our next app on the list. ProCam 6 comes with a very similar set of rich features like full manual control options for shutter speed, ISO, focus, white balance, and all of that. And all of those controls, which can be adjusted easily with the slider, are found at the bottom of the app for easy access. The top of the app is where we have options for raw photo support, the ability to save photos in TIFF format for maximum quality, and to the right is how you can switch between lenses on a dual lens iPhone in order to adjust focal length. ProCam 6 does let you edit your photo with 60 different filters, 17 various lenses for different effects, adjustment tools, as well as the ability to edit videos too. You can even make a Siri shortcut for ProCam 6 if you want. Our next app on the list is Obscura 2, and much like Halide, it has a very easy to use one-handed UI with swipe-based gestures that truly make all the features easy to access. All of the various settings are in this wheel-based UI, and kind of once you settle in and find the setting that you want, you can then tap on that icon to bring up more features for that setting. I like this UI a little bit more than some of the others because it helps reduce clutter and that feeling of being overwhelmed when you first open up some of these other camera applications. Your two main controls that you'll probably want to use, like focus and exposure, can be found on the left and right next to the capture button at the bottom of the screen. Swiping down from the top of the screen brings you to your photo library and also your settings menu where more features are available and metadata of each photo can be found by swiping up from the bottom when you're looking at one of your photos. Like ProCam 6, you can even edit your photos with 19 different filters included and there are more filters available for purchase if you want. Obscura 2 is available in the App Store for only $4.99, which is one of the cheaper apps on the list. Now, speaking of cheaper applications, Focus is actually a free app, but using that term lightly here as all of the features that you're probably going to want will require a pro license for the app. Now you can go with the monthly fee, a one-year fee, or you can pay a one-time fee of $11.99, which is a much smarter option to me than paying the 99 cents per month or $6.99 for one year. Focus is probably one of the more simple apps in terms of UI. There isn't a lot of clutter or buttons at the forefront. Just some of the essentials like switching from your front facing camera to your rear facing cameras, flash, white balance and exposure controls, as well as a cool effect called real time blurring. This will give you the shallow depth of field look, but before you take the picture, you can actually see what it might look like in real time. You can even import your portrait photos and adjust the background blur in the app, as well as add some different lens effects. Compared to most of the other apps on this list, I'm not sure there's a lot of features that you can't get on some of the other cheaper applications. The app does shine, however, in the photo editing department as there are tons of previously mentioned photo effects and ways to help make your photo stand out after it's been taken. 
I do really like the ability to activate the flashlight through the app in order to give your subject a bit more light if you need it. If editing is more your game and you need some of those pro controls for your camera, then this is probably the perfect app for you. Finally, our last app comes from the people over at Moment who are the creators of the popular lens attachments for mobile phones. Don't worry, you don't need any lenses in order to use their Pro Camera app, however. Fitting the theme of all the other apps, you have basic Pro controls like ISO, exposure, shutter speed, focus, and white balance, all at the bottom near the shutter button. You can also quickly jump between different focal lengths with the 1x, 2x button. At the top, there are even more useful controls like being able to toggle on different grids for shot composition, flash, timers, and file formats, which Moment does support RAW, TIFF, and JPEG. And if you do happen to have any Moment lenses, you can select which ones you have attached with the lens button. This app is definitely targeted towards those serious mobile photographers, much like Halide, but with slightly less flashy features. The manual controls for photos and videos work really well, and it's well worth the $4.99 price tag. If you're really into mobile photography and you wanna take things up a notch, it might be worth checking out some of the company's lenses, like its anamorphic lens, which can shoot letterbox style photos or videos. If you're interested in a video on some of the Moment lenses and what they are capable of doing, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, be sure to let us know which camera app you use and why in the comment section as well. And as always, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss more videos like this one in the future. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.